our sons, we will pass that information on to you. But again, we want to, uh, first of all, thank God for her life and ask that uh, God would comfort the family. Amen? In Leviticus chapter 10 tonight, we are going to begin with uh, verse number one. I think we have several verses here. Uh, we're going to use our audio Bible to uh, uh, communicate this to you. If you're here for, for the very first time, this is our format. Uh, we come in and we encourage you to have your Bibles open, but uh, if you don't have a Bible or you have your Bibles open, we just read this through because once this segment is done, you can go out to TLMBCH Ministries and listen to uh, the previous chapters that we have covered from Leviticus chapter 1 up to uh, where we are present. Amen? We are ready. Okay? We're getting ready. Okay? So in Leviticus chapter 10 tonight, we're going to see how uh, God is holy, and when you approach God, who is holy, uh, God has certain requirements. We saw this in chapter 9, and in chapter 9, we saw that in the consecration of the priest with the oil and with the water and with the blood and with the clothes, those things uh, separated them from the congregation and made them holy as unto the Lord. And so God now sees them in a total different light than he did prior to that. And we're gonna see results in chapter 10 of when you approach God in a way that God did not prescribe. Amen, let's listen. Leviticus 10. And they that and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein, and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elspan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did, according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, it shall be a statue for ever throughout your generations. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left, Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is thy due, and thy son's due, of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire. For so I am commanded, that the way of breast, and he the shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons, and thy daughters with thee. For they be thy due, and thy sons due, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The he shoulder and the way of breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat, to wave it for a wave offering for the Lord. And it shall be thine, and thy sons with thee, by statute forever, as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ethamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, 
Wherefore have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And God hath given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation to make atonement for them before the Lord. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I have commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. And such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content. Amen. 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 So we have here now a picture, a portrait from last week. And I just tried to emphasize this a few minutes ago. And that is in chapter 9. Um, Aaron and his sons were consecrated, dedicated to the Lord. What does that mean? That God made it possible for them to approach him. In other words, without the water, the all, without the blood, without the clothing, the special clothing that was uh, dedicated uh, for the priest to come before the Lord, uh, Aaron and his four sons were set apart unto the Lord. They were sanctified unto the Lord to consecrate themselves before the Lord. This is very, very important. Oftentimes we don't see the importance of consecration. But when you approach God, who is what? Holy. We, we mentioned this in chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and now again in 10. God is holy. If you don't remember anything else, notice that God is holy and you cannot approach him any kind of way. We see this in verse 1 tonight. Notice what the scripture says. It says, And Nadab and Abihu, which were two of the four sons of Aaron, who were already consecrated and set aside, they did something that God did not command or commanded against. Notice that they took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not. Which means that they were warned. See, God will always warn you, just like he did with Adam. He warned Adam not to eat of the forbidden fruit. And what happened? Adam did exactly what God told him not to do. And as a result, Adam and his wife were put out of the garden. Amen? We see in the Old Testament, Saul. Saul entered into the priesthood. That was forbidden. He went in and did something that God did not prescribe. And when Samuel came along, he told Saul that obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. And at that result, God rejected him and removed 10 of his kingdoms away from him, took 10 of his kingdoms away from him and gave them to another. So we can actually see that there's very little wiggle room for anyone that is called into a closer walk with the Lord. Amen. God holds you to a higher standard. That's why the Bible says, let that not be many teachers among you. Why? Because teachers are going to be held to a higher standard whenever we teach what we teach because we, God's going to hold us accountable uh, for that. Amen. But Nadab and Habayu and their priestly duties were already instructed before they were consecrated how to handle each one of the offerings and each one of the duties as they came before the Lord. In verse 1 it said that God did something there. All right? In verse 2 rather it said, And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. What do you mean devoured them? He burnt them up. And they died before the Lord. See? Again, somebody said, well, why would God do that? God is what? Holy. That's the central theme here. 
God is teaching us that he's holy. He's holy. Amen. Now notice in verse 3, Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be, what? Sanctified in them that come near me. That word nigh means near. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Now you got to take a closer look at what's going on here. These are Aaron's sons. Aaron's sons have just died. When death takes place, people get very emotional. Amen. And what God was, I mean, what, what Moses was telling Aaron now that God has consumed your sons. If you don't act right or you falsely accuse God by your actions, by rending your clothes or showing displeasure or whatever the case may be, because God has set you in a special place between the people and between God, then God will do the same to you that he just done to your two sons. So Moses, seeing Aaron's countenance, warned him right there. In our own language, be careful, lest you two die. Okay? So remember, Moses is the instructor. He is the one, just like the paraclete, that comes alongside of us and instructs us in the things of the Lord. Amen? And so we can see there that Aaron did exactly what Moses told him. Now in verse 4, he said, And Moses called Mishael and Elphaphat, El the sons of Uzel, the uncle of Aaron. And this is very important. And said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Let me make two observations here. First of all, uh, Nadab and Abihu had taken fire, strained fire, which means it didn't come off the altar like it's supposed to, the burnt altar, okay, the altar of sacrifice. That's what it means by strained fire. It's not the fire that God prescribed or recommended. So they brought another fire that didn't come from that altar. The fire that was on the altar was supposed to be brought in for the burning of the incense. Amen? And then they mixed the wrong formula or they had the wrong prescription for the incense. Somebody said, well, why would they do that? I think the hint is that they may have been drunk or intoxicated. And when they came into the sanctuary where the candelabra, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense, which was right before the curtain of the holiest of holies, think about that in your imagination now. You drunk, you coming in to do the business of the Lord. You've been set aside to do this work. You're coming and you're approaching or ministering before the Lord. You drunk. Amen. You didn't do exactly like God told you. And then you go in to the holiest of holies. Okay, because just a curtain away. And what have you. And all of a sudden, the fire from God comes off the altar and burns these two, Nadab and Abihu, up. Now, the other two sons of Aaron could not leave because of the ritual that they were performing. They were interceding between God and the people. The duties that they were given was to intercede between God and the people. So the cousins had to come in and take Nadab and Abihu out and take them outside the tabernacle to a, another place, remove them, in other words, from God's presence and what have you, to take care of their burial, their bodies. Aaron could not attend his own son's funeral, neither his sons. Why? Because they had a responsibility and a dedication before the Lord. And notice in verse 5, it says, So they went near and carried them in their coats. They didn't grab their skin because there was a law. If you remember, in our earlier chapters, you could not touch a body, and if you did, you would be what? Unclean. We talked about they went from being clean to unclean, clean to unclean. 
So if they had to touch their bodies, that's what verse 5 there, and what have you, they would have be considered, those cousins would be considered unclean, which means that they would be separated from the blessings of the Lord. Amen? They took the bodies where? Outside the camp, as Moses had said. In other words, Moses there is what? Instructing them as to what to do. Praise God. Look at verse 6. It said, And Moses said unto Aaron, and to Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, uh, his son, those the two that did not die, uncover not your heads. Now notice, notice, remember, they are just as consecrated as Nadab and Abihu. They have been washed with the water, with the oil, they had the blood on them, and they had the special clothes on them, which means that they were what? Holy before the Lord. They were sanctified and consecrated before the Lord. So when you're consecrated for the Lord, you are being governed by the things of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. Amen? And so you have to be very, very what? Careful that you don't do something contrary to what the spirit of God is leading you to do. But look at verse 6 again. He says, And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither render your clothes. Remember, Moses just warned Aaron. Now Aaron is warning his sons. Okay? In other words, if you do that, at least ye die, and at least wrath come upon all the what? People. Let me make a point there. See, what kept God from breaking out on the whole entire nation of Israel were those sons, the Levit Levitical sons, Aaron and his sons, who were God's ministers before him, before the Lord. In other words, they were interceding between them and the people. This is a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came and what? Gave his life on behalf of our life. And had he in any way, form, or fashion not wholly followed the prescription of the Lord, he would not qualify to be our Savior. Amen? Notice, the consecration is the key. Why consecration? Because God is what? Holy. Holy. If you got a tablet and you write down, just write that down. You may not fully understand what it means that God is holy, but you'll see in the relationships and in the fellowship of the Lord, it's important to the person of the Lord and the commandments of the Lord that we follow his instruction. Nadab and Abihu was supposed to get the fire off of the altar, which is a type of the cross, where Christ's body died, and what have you, he was crucified, right? And then they were supposed to bring in the the instant the fire in and the in and the blood in and the incense in before the Lord. The, each one of those articles had horns on them, and the blood was supposed to be applied to the horns. We learned this in earlier chapters. And because they did not do that because of their intoxication, God consumed them. They made several violations of God's word. God is a holy God, and He shows us this. Amen. Remember, in Acts chapter 5, you can make a note of that, verse 6, we see when Peter was there, Ananias and Sapphira, the, the husband and wife, they, was, they went and took the, uh, their land, they sold it, and they kept a portion of it back, and as a result, what happened? Peter said, why lie ye to the Holy Spirit? So the husband came in first, he lied, right he dropped dead the men came in just like in in this chapter here you can see those parallels can't you they carried him out later his wife came in and what have you and peter asked the same question and said the men are waiting right outside the door and she lied and she dropped dead and what happened she was carried out and the bible says that fear came up on all the people the fear amen came up on all the people god was letting them know then and now that he is to be held in what high esteem high esteem if you're the type of person 
that thinks that God is just, uh, you know, you got a casual attitude toward the things of God, that is not healthy at all. That's not healthy at all. Remember in 1 Corinthians 11, on last week we took the Lord's Supper, and Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians 11, he said some of you are, are, are weak, in other words, you're sick, and then some of you die. Why? Because you're not discerning the Lord's body. Amen? He said some sleep, mean die, because they did not uh, 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 discern the Lord's body. We have to be very, very, very careful that being children of God, amen, uh, Christ our Savior and Lord, that when we represent God in the world, we are considered priests, just like Aaron and his sons. In 2 Peter, it says that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, amen. God has called us out to be a holy nation representative of a holy priesthood before all the people. Every believer is considered a royal priest, and we are in a royal priesthood. That's why when you, the second Timothy says, study to show yourself what? Approved unto God, being a workman, not being ashamed, but rightly handling the word of God. Why do you think that echoes? Why do you think he says that? He's looking all the way back here because man at no point in time ever seen God or knew God. God had to reveal himself to man. And therefore, when God, the first thing God let him know, man know is that he is what? Holy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. We look at verse 7. He said, And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. Why? Because they still had the what? The water, the washing, the oil, the anointing, the blood, amen, and the clothes on, which means that they were to stay before the Lord and complete their responsibilities and their duties. Amen? He said, at least she died for the anointing oil of the Lord, notice he says, is where? Upon you, and they did according to the word of who? Moses. Amen? Now, notice what happens in the next verse. And the Lord spake unto Aaron. Notice. Normally the Lord speak to Moses, then Moses speak to Aaron, and then Aaron speaks to his son. But here, in verse 8, we have the Lord spake unto who? Aaron. He's speaking directly to the high priest. God is giving Aaron a charge directly from himself. Why? Because of, you know, they went from rejoicing in the Lord, they, they had just made an atonement for themselves and for the people, and Aaron had came out, I mean, Aaron had came out and blessed the people before the Lord. And we saw in chapter 9, the last verse 20, that God, the fire came down and consumed the offering, which means that God was pleased with all of that. And right after a great victory, we have a tragedy. You see that? And that, that's often the pattern in Christian. We saw that in 1 Kings when Elijah on Mount Carmel, what? Had a great victory against the prophets of Baal. And then right after that, he's running through the desert from a woman called Jezebel. Huh? Go from a great high to a great low. Amen? So be very, very careful. Be very, very careful that you walk circumspect before the Lord, that you don't become relaxed, that you don't use your faith in one situation and then lay it down in another. Very, very important. God is teaching us this through the precepts of the Lord. If you're here for the very first time, or maybe you've been here with us all along, I would highly encourage you to read Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Very important psalm in the Bible. Psalms 19. Because it, 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 it outlines the statutes, the commandments, the judgments, all those things that are very, very important. And then it ends with, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 
Amen. God is always, always letting us understand that he is number one. Amen. That he is number one. Aaron and his sons, his four sons, amen, they, they are consecrated and set aside for the Lord, and God is watching everything that they do very, very closely. God is watching our lives, what? The very same way, amen? In the next verse, Verse 9, it says, do not drink wine nor strong drink. This is the instruction that God has given to Aaron concerning his sons. Remember, if those other sons, <clears throat> remember, if those other sons get wiped out, then what? Everything has to be put on hold. The whole priesthood could be destroyed. So God comes directly to Aaron and instructs him specifically what he needs to understand and to do. He said, do not drink wine nor strong drink thou nor thy sons with thee when ye go where? Into the tabernacle of the congregation lest ye what? die it shall be a statue what how long forever through your generation in other words god comes directly to aaron he don't tell moses and moses tell aaron god gives him a strong warning a personal visitation himself and let him know god always warns us before he judges us just like he did with adam he always going to do that amen God's going to warn you before he does anything. Amen? And we have to be very, very careful that we follow what? The instructions of the Lord. You know, in the New Testament, it says, Be not drunk with wine where it is in excess, but be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Hand it to me. Be filled with Thing, with the Holy Spirit because if you are this admonition that Paul gives in the New Testament goes all the way back to the very same thing that we see here in the scriptures okay Leviticus 10 1 through 2 others died okay we can see that uh, verse 10 and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy okay and between what unclean and clean why did God say that that you may put difference between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean because this is the duty He's reminding them, this is your duty. This is, this is why you're ministering before me. You're teaching the people. Because if you don't do the right thing, then the people will follow your example. Amen? The people are watching you, God is saying, and I'm watching, and, and I'm watching you too. And I got to make sure that you don't misrepresent me before the people. Amen? Oftentimes as ministers, we can go out there and do some Paul said, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, people are watching you. You say, nobody, why, go across the street and ask your neighbor what you think about it. And they'll tell you a whole book on you. A whole dossier on you. Because they're watching you. you may, they may not come knock on your door and say anything, but if the police went over there and said, do you know that neighbor across there? And they'll give a whole book full on you. People are watching you. They're observing you. Even though they don't say nothing to you, they may not even say hello to you, but they're watching you. These, this congregation of Israel is watching Aaron and his sons. They're watching how they operate before them, them and the Lord. And Aaron's sons did not do what was right. It's not the first time. 
Eli the priest, we see later on, had some sons also that died. Amen? Because of what they did before the Lord. And Eli the priest did not, what? Warn them. He did not reprimand them. He did not correct them. What does that teach us? That if you know somebody, especially people in your own house, that are doing something wrong, you better speak up. Amen? To the minister, God says, their blood is going to be required at your hand. Amen? Amen? So we are to tell people, we are to warn people. We can't, we're not police where we tell people, hey, I'm going to write you a ticket, I'm going to arrest you or something like that. No, no, no. But we are like that stop sign or that yield sign or that green light or that red light that tell you what you should be instructed to do in the circumstances that you're in. So we have to speak to ourselves, allow the Spirit of God to instruct us, and then as an example before people, we ought to admonish them. That's what we do with our children when we, uh, when we are raising them up, right? We don't let them just run wild. We just tell, hey, look, Johnny, stop doing that. Uh, Bill, stop doing that. Susan, stop doing that. But don't just tell them to stop doing it, instruct them. This is what I'm telling you not to do. Not to do. God had instructed Aaron and his son before he had to kill Aaron's two sons and was threatening to kill Aaron and the other two if they did not walk holy before him. Amen? And then in verse 12 we see, And Moses spake unto Aaron and said to Eleazar and Ithamar his sons that were left, Take the meat offering. In other words, Moses trying to get them to go and finish doing. That was an interruption. That no death was an interruption. And he's trying to make sure they stay on course because God is still holy. And God is still requiring them to do what he's called them to do. Amen. Amen. He said, take the meat offering that remaineth of the offering of the Lord made by fire and eat it without, notice what he says, without leaven beside the altar, for it is what? Most holy. Oh, if God is observing these things, and somebody says, well, I don't understand why God would do this and why they had to do that, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, we said in chapter one of Leviticus, chapter two, three, four, and five, whenever we talk about these five offerings, they are a picture of who? Jesus Christ and his works. So when we want to really know Christ, and we should, we can study the Bible as 2 Timothy says, study to show yourself approved unto God, being a what? A workman, not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So when it comes down to God's instruction, as believers, we ought to study so that we will know, just like God told Aaron, to know the difference between clean and unclean, holy and, 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 and holy, holy and unholy. We are supposed to know the difference between two, not just walk through as though uh, we don't want to know that at all. No, no, no. Amen? If you really take your Christian walk, your walk of discipleship seriously, then you will be mindful of the thing that God has openly and clearly laid out before you. The problem that we have as believers, we don't take God serious, nor do we take his word serious. Amen? We just have a Bible, but that's just like a piece of furniture. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's right over there. I'll open it when, when, when things go on that, that I'm trying to get God to fix, like a, going to our tool chest, getting a hammer or a screwdriver. No, 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 no. God wants you just like you breathe every day, you eat every day, you walk to and fro every day. He wants you to be instructed in His Word. It's not hard to do. It's not. It's really not difficult because when God opened up the what, the eyes of our understanding, we can better understand what's going on around us as well as what's going on inside of us. Amen. Don't you want to know what's up? Amen. Then look up. Amen. Before you have to go up. Amen? So God got this thing already in check, and he don't want us walking around here like we're blind 
and bumping into stuff and all that kind of stuff. He wants to give us clear instruction so we'll be pleasing unto him. We'll represent the people. We're the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. And when people look at us and people are all looking at you, they, the Bible said they will glorify our Father, which is where? In heaven. These people watching Aaron and his sons. And they were giving glory to God. And the people shouted, they said in chapter 9. Amen. When the fire came down. Amen. They praised God. But if Aaron and his son had messed up in chapter 9, there would have been no shouting. God would have came down and consumed them, not the offering. Consumed them. Are you listening? God is what? Can't hear you. Holy. Amen. Look at verse 13. It said, And ye shall eat it in the holy place because it is what thy do, which means it's your duty. And thy sons do. The sons also have the same what? Duty. Of the sacrifice of the Lord made by fire. When it means made by fire, it means that that altar, that fire on that altar when you came into the tabernacle where all the sacrifices were, that fire was never to go out. Sacrifices were required at a certain time of day, in the morning and in the evening. Amen. The prayers also were to go up, and that's what the, uh, 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 Nadab and Abihu were supposed to be going in and taking that altar of incense was representative of the prayers of the saints. And they messed that thing up. Amen. They messed it up. As a footnote, uh, Psalm 141, around verse 5, make a note of that and go read that. Amen. 141, Psalm 141, 5. Because God has often told us in the scriptures, we see it in the book of Revelations, amen, as well, that this, these prayers are very, very important. The angels had a golden censer in Revelation, amen, and they uh, uh, took these, and it was, it was full of the prayers of the saints. Now, what if these angels had messed up? Huh? God looks at prayers, coming up before him, amen, so that he can bring down those what? Those blessings. Amen? Amen. Those prayers have to go up before the Lord. Jesus Christ right now as our great high priest is where? Sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making what? Intercessions for us how often? Every single day. You can go to Revelation 8, 3 and 4, and Revelation 5 and 8. Revelation 8, 3 and 4, in Revelation 5 and 8 and just read that those two verses back there and you see how important prayer is before God we the sacrifices at the altar the burnt altar and then prayers are to come in right before the holies of holies with the altar of incense which is incense represents the prayers of the saints amen when John the Baptist's father was there Zechariah he was right there offering up prayers when a priest went into that temple he was to offer up prayer. That's what his responsibility for that altar was to pray. That's why we ask you to pray before each, each, each one of these days at 6 o'clock. Just pray. Amen? Amen. God wants us to pray. Somebody said, well, God already knows about me. No, no, no. The duty is like with Aaron and his sons. And Aaron. The duty is prayer. Amen? Prayer is an accessory. Not just for what you need. You have to pray for your family. You have to pray for this country, the world if, at, at large, whatever, for Israel. We have to pray, folks. Amen? We have to pray. And God is calling on us to do the work, the visible work, for people around us. Because God, you cannot see. And if you say you're a believer, then somebody ought to see you as God's representative. You know, we are God's ambassadors. Amen? before Jesus Christ. They ought to see you what? Doing what God called you to do. Let me hurry on. And uh, the next verse, verse uh, 14, it says, and the, the wave breast and the heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place. Notice, that's very important. And what kind of place? A clean place. Thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee. In other words, it's talking about a place that's consecrated, a place that is set aside for that purpose. Amen? Because, remember, these people that came out of Egypt, 
Amen. They were sinners just like us. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Everybody was. But when you come before the Lord and you follow his commandments, like we said last week, he said, if you love me, you obey my what? My commandments. Not my suggestions, my commandments. My instructions, in other words. And God and Jesus Christ in John 17 prayed to the Father to send another comforter, a paraclete, to come alongside to lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that we ought to go. Amen? To convict us of sin, to convict us of righteousness, and of the coming judgment. Of sin, of righteousness, and the coming judgment. That is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You can see that in the New Testament when Christ prayed for his coming. Amen? Go read it. Because we can see now that the Holy Spirit lives where? His residence is where? In us. That's what makes us what we are before the Lord. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit. He's a, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. That's why God can call us holy. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in us. Not because we go to church or talk proper and all that or do something. It's because God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit, is in us. That's why we now can be considered holy. Amen? And because of the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sins, and He's given us a new nature that cannot sin. And that's the nature that the Holy Spirit dwells in on inside of the believer. The believer has two natures, we said last week. Amen? And so if we're not going according to the destruction of the Holy Spirit, we're going into the direction of the flesh which is unclean the which direction of the Holy Spirit is the direction of being what clean amen let's skip down to verse 16 and Moses delight uh, diligently sought the goat of the sin offering He's like where the where the goat for the sin offering because remember this atonement is for forgiveness you know, you go through all this and, 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 that, and that goat representing the offering that was made. We talked about that last week in, in verse 9. I mean, chapter 9. That, that, that goat was going to be put up there, burned, his blood will be brought in. And because of Nadab and Abihu's uh, 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 delinquency in their duties, the things were not, and, and Moses knowing that, hey, let me check out because what else is not being done? So look what he says there. He says, And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. Mm, mm, mm. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the other two sons. In other words, they were supposed to make sure that things would be done the prescribed way. The sons of Aaron, which were left, saying what? <clears throat> Wherefore have ye not eaten the what? Sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy, and God had given it you to bear the what? That is, iniquities of the congregation. You see that? In other words, God, just like God placed our iniquities upon Christ, amen, so that we could be forgiven, Aaron and his sons were going through that same role, a picture of Christ and his works, as God was placing the congregation's iniquities where? Upon them to make a what? Atonement for them before the Lord. In other words, the word atonement means to forgive them. And before I close, just let me put this here because when they went in and took the fowl, I mean the fowl for the altar where the meat was and everything, and then went in to the congregation where the altar of incense was there and they, they were offering up the prayers and what have you, God was receiving that mm -hmm, because of the work that they were doing and their sins, watch this now, their sins, which everybody sins, amen, that had been recorded Amen. When that atonement was made, their sins were covered. And on the day of atonement, all those sins that had been recorded over the years, the months rather, up to that day of atonement, Yom Kippur, which is the high day, 
when that priest went in and did this particular sacrifice, their sins were wiped clean. My God. So it's a picture of our sin being what? Forgiven. Amen. The only problem was, we find in the book of Hebrews, that this had to be done every year, perpetually. Where when Christ did it, he wiped them away once and for all, never to bring them up ever again. Isn't that good news? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Verse 18, Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. It was not to stay out there. It was supposed to be brought in. Moses is reprimanding them. He's charging them about this. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I commanded. Amen. Amen. So the meat and the blood, everything was described how it's supposed to be handled. Amen. And they failed to do that. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, his father steps up and intercedes a little bit. And you see Moses over there really uh, uh, going at uh, his other sons. He lost two sons already. Now Moses is chewing up the other two because they're not doing what he's doing. And we have here recorded in verse 19, And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. And such things have befallen me. In other words, I'm the father. And if it had, if, if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? In other words, when God looked at their acts of responsibility and duties, that's the outward appearance. God also looks upon the what? The heart. In other words, they could not half-heartedly do anything, and God would have not received it. That's what Aaron is saying. Was Aaron was already sad, possibly even on the verge of being angry, and what have you. And I'm pretty sure his sons were grieving as well. Okay, and they, even though they would have went through the motions of doing this, their hearts would not have been in it. And this is what he's talking about. They did it according to the letter, the spirit, but not according to the letter. All right? And God was looking upon their hearts. And then notice in verse 29, I mean 20, it says, And when Moses heard that, he was content. Which means that he understood why they had not carried through everything that they were commanded to do. Amen? So we can see right there that God is holy. You cannot approach God without being clean. Amen? Without being holy. And God requires that. He's looking at that. And so when people became unclean, God had a prescription for them to go through to become clean so that they could continue to do the work that God had called them to do. Hopefully this has uh, uh, been clearly understood. If not, what I recommend you to do is go back to those scriptures that we gave you and understand the bigger picture that God is holy and that Aaron and his sons are, uh, are mediators between God and the people. And whenever they messed up, God had to show up and, do, and deal with that and he dealt with it in death. And the people understood that on the day of uh, the hot atonement, Yom Kippur, that if Aaron did not step out from offering his duties, that their sins that had been atoned, was supposed to be atoned for the whole year, that God could break out on the people because of just the thing that Aaron and his sons did not do. Men, as the head of your household, God is going to come to you. Amen? But what's going on in your household? Somebody says, well, I have a man in the household. Well, then, the man in your household is always Jesus Christ, and you are the head of that household. Therefore, God holds you responsible. Amen? There's a responsible person in every household. If that's you, then God is going to hold you accountable for the things that he commands us through the scriptures. Amen? He says, if you love me, 
obey my commandments. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit and your people. We pray, Father God, for the family of Sister Laverne. We pray, Father God, for those that know you not in the pardon of their sins. And for God, those that say we know you, we pray, Father God, that you would increase our faith and our understanding of your word, that we may be found obedient in the day of judgment. For all will have to come before you, Father God, and be examined based on the things that we have done in these bodies, both good and bad, says the scriptures. So Father, we in that day, we pray, Father God, that we will be found obedient to the things that you have left us here to do in this short while while we are here. Amen? We ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And we look forward to seeing you on this Sunday, our second Sunday. We uh, also would uh, look to see you next week, Wednesday, and we ask that you would go to TLMBCH Ministries and look at those thumbnails and just review uh, these lessons and the messages that we've been preaching and remember to contribute and we have done a new thumbnail uh, we're in the process of doing another thumbnail for the Lord's Supper so that those of you that did not get an opportunity Sunday to partake in the Lord's Supper you should be able uh, to do that. Amen. God bless you and good night.